Sky Mobile sponsors the transfer window on Sky Sports News. Let's start, Mark with the goings-on at Wolves, a player on strike. What's going on? Yeah, very unusual situation. You don't see it all that often, but this is really the last chance saloon for Mateus Nunes to try and force this move to Manchester City through. Very often you see players agitating for a move. This is the highest level of agitation because it's now two days in a row that he's not turned up to the Wolves training complex where he has been expected to be as far as the manager Gary O'Neill is concerned. We know that there has been long-standing interest in the player from Manchester City. This is a story that was initially broke by David Ornstein earlier on today. It's been confirmed by our sources as well. And Wolves will discipline the player for not turning up to training. So this is significant. To just take you back in time ever so slightly, there was interest from Manchester City last Thursday where a bid was rejected of £47 million. You have to remember that, that Nunes was a Wolves record transfer for the football club, this time last summer for 42 million. So it's not a great deal more than what they paid for him. So you can understand why it was rejected. He has four years left on his current deal, plus an option for a further year in terms of making that a five-year deal. Our understanding is that Wolves would only sell him for a minimum of 60 million pounds. But of course, really, as far as they're concerned, he's not for sale. But we are expecting Manchester City to come back to the table now that his head's been turned, now that he's not turned up to training, to try and potentially get a deal agreed. But this is really significant developments tonight. Darren, what do you make of a player going on strike? I mean, I don't think it's the greatest thing to do, in all honesty. We've spoken about Manchester City comes calling, like, you want to get there. As a player, you want to get there. But at the moment, they've not agreed a deal. They've not agreed the fee. Um, so to just to not turn up to training. I've been in around situations at football clubs when, you know, players can be disruptive in training. But to not turn up, I've never been involved in that situation. The issue arises if he doesn't, if Man City doesn't meet the fee, how you can get him back involved in the squad, integrate him and how the supporters can get back on side. This is a football club that paid an awful lot of money for him last year. They're paying him a lot of money by all accounts. But if you're Gary O'Neill, new football club, uh, you're the new manager of Wolves, do you want this hanging over you? I don't think you do. I think Do you want a player that doesn't want to play for you? Of course not. Of course not. If they don't meet the fee, Manchester City... Uh, the valuation, and he does stay. Of course, he's a fantastic footballer. That's why Manchester City wants him. Uh, that's why Pep Guardiola wants him. So you'd want him to, you'd want to be able to get him back involved in the squad. But I think from now till Friday, we're probably going to see some movement on this. And if it's me, the valuation is what sixty. They're they're offering what forty seven around. You've got to meet somewhere so Gary O'Neill can just forget this and, and concentrate on the players that he already has at the football club. Yeah. Just, go on, Mark. No, I was just going to say, the, the bigger picture as well for Wolves is that they've lost so many players this season, uh, this summer. They're right up against it with regards to FFP as well. There is an understanding from sources close to the football club that have told us that they're not under pressure any longer to sell players and generate money to try and balance the FFP commitments. So, therefore, this would probably be seen as a piece of business that's unwanted because it's such a key player uh, and they've already done the bulk of their selling already. So it comes at the wrong time because not only are they potentially going to sell the player, they've got to try and replace him. And that's the most difficult you're, thing with the window closing. You're in a difficult situation if you are, Gary O'Neill, because you're probably battling with the powers that be at the football club, potentially saying, look, we don't want a player that, that doesn't want to be here. But they're saying, well, there's a valuation that needs to be met if it doesn't. But then you're thinking as a manager, well... If, you, if you're my player, what, I want you to stay at the football club. I want you to be part of it. You're talented. Wolves is a big season for Wolves. So you're thinking, well, if you're going to go on strike, then maybe this is the worst thing that you could be doing and I'll just keep you around the football club and yeah. won't, won't accept a fee no matter how much. Darmesh, you've seen a lot of transfer windows. A lot of players agitate. Generally, when they behave like this, do they get the move they want? Case by case, but... If a player agitates, and Darren will be able to throw more light on this. Have you experienced uh, a situation when you've been playing when maybe yourself or somebody else has agitated that much for a move that they've said, right, I'm not training anymore? 
Never, never not training. Um, I, I myself, and I'm not proud of this, I was a bit disruptive at, at Crystal Palace. I and think. what does that mean? What did you do? I was in pre-season and uh, look, I was one of the, the, the fitter players in terms of running and I was losing to the manager in the races. So I wasn't giving it 100%. Um, more so, I, I wanted to stay at the football club first and foremost and there wasn't a contract on the table. QPR, they want, there was a contract on the table. So these situation, this situation arose and... You know, I felt for my family and for my future that I need to get this contract. Crystal Palace were in a bad way financially. So I was a little bit disruptive in, I just wasn't giving it 100%. And like I said, not proud of that. I didn't end up getting a move. I ended up getting a new contract at Crystal Palace. George Burley came in. That was difficult for me because George Burley gave me my chance in football at Ipswich. So it was, it was not solely because of me, but it was clever from the football club because then I... Didn't, I wasn't disrupted anymore, so I ended up signing a contract. But I've been around players where, you know, certain things have been said in, in the papers. I was, I was at a football club once, certain things have been said in the papers. The manager got hold of them, came onto the, a bus who was about to go to a away game, threw the, threw the papers at the player and said, get off my bus. And, and eventually this player did get his move. So Darmesh is right. It's case by case in terms of whether this gets done. When I was a player, most of the time it did happen. Just not when, not when I was disruptive. <laughs> you weren't disruptive enough. <laughs> exactly. So that said then, do you think Mateus Nunez will be a Wolves or Manchester City player on September the 2nd? I think this is, um, this is in the power of Manchester City, I believe, because they know he's been disrupted. We've seen this before. They've disrupted players and then just walked away from the deal. So I think... They need to come up with a fee and a solution with Wolves. I don't think the player going on a strike will have any relevance whatsoever because the player is getting paid by Wolves Football Club. I'm sure there'll be some financial the disciplinary as well if he doesn't turn up any longer. But Manchester City, I think, will come up with a fee. He's a perfect fit for Manchester City, let's be honest. He's a talented football player. Kevin De Bruyne being out till the new year. I, I, I think he'll end up at Manchester City. I wonder if Wolves have set a private deadline as well. There's only four days of this window to go. If they lose one of their key players, they don't want it happening at 10 o'clock on September the 1st because they're going to have no time to bring in a replacement. So, but is he still a key player if, they, if he doesn't get the move? Because we could see a situation where, OK, he's on strike now. You want to integrate him back into the football team. But he's, what, 25, 24, 25, so he's still young. He could sulk for a long, long time if this doesn't get done. He could. I'm saying that up this season has shown that he is a key player. I know he got sent off in the second game. He didn't yeah. play in their, their first win of the season or over the weekend, but he was fantastic against Manchester United. He started both of their opening two games. So Gary O'Neill is obviously counting on him, mm. sees him as a key player. From the outside, you could say that. So if they are to sell him, I think they would want this done very, very soon now, rather than it dragging out onto deadline day and then thinking, well, we've got this money, but this money's no good to us mm. just now because we can't bring in anyone to replace. I Mateus agree. Nunes. I agree. What, what Gary O'Neill will be doing now is he'll be looking at potential replacements, whether that's one, two or three players, just in case. And he'll leave, every, he'll leave the fee and everything to do with Nunez. He'll leave to the both football clubs and the powers that be at Wolves and he'll be looking at replacements. So I agree with Armish. It needs to be done relatively soon so then he can go straight out and get who he wants.